This is lecture 8. In the previous lecture, we looked at nodal analysis, how to do nodal analysis uh, when you have a circuit with current sources and resistors. That was the easiest case. And we extended that to when we have voltage sources. In that case, if you are doing hand analysis, you can use a super node. If you are uh, trying to set up the equations for a computer, you can set the current through the voltage source as an extra variable and go ahead with the analysis. Now, when you have uh, control sources, when you have a current controlled, sorry, a voltage controlled current source, then uh, all it does is to add some terms to the matrix, the conductance matrix, so that it becomes asymmetrical. Okay. And other cases can also be handled in the same way. Okay. When you have a voltage controlled voltage source, uh, you will have to, uh, again, either define a super node. If you are doing hand analysis, that's the preferred method because it reduces the number of equations. Or if you are uh, setting up the equations for uh, analysis by computer, then you define the current through the voltage source as an auxiliary variable and also write down the equation for the control source. Okay? So in all the cases, on the right-hand side, you have the source vector, which consists of independent current sources and independent voltage sources. And on the left-hand side, you will have a matrix times the variable vector. The variable vector will be the node voltages with respect to the reference node plus any auxiliary variable you may have used. If you have voltage sources, there will be the current through the voltage sources. Okay. Now, before we go on uh, with uh, today's lecture, is there any questions on uh, previous lecture or any aspect of nodal analysis? I would like to take them up. Okay, so it looks like uh, things were uh, pretty clear. So what we will uh, look at today is an alternative uh, to nodal analysis that also is uh, sometimes used, and that is known as mesh analysis. Okay. Now, uh, the nodal analysis this uses KCL at n minus 1 nodes of the circuit. The circuit has n nodes and you have to write KCL at n minus 1 nodes. And variables are uh, the n minus 1 node voltages and any auxiliary variables. And these auxiliary variables are current through voltage sources. Okay. And the equations come from uh, N minus 1 uh, KCL equations plus equations for voltage sources. Okay. Now, uh, the mesh analysis is the counterpart of this. Now, instead of uh, starting with KVL, first I will uh, tell you about something called a loop analysis.
it uses kvl around b minus n plus 1 loops okay and it uses current says variables okay now this loop analysis the way it is done is you first identify a tree then you add uh, each link that is branches that are not in a tree to form a new loop okay we took an example of uh, this uh, in one of the earlier lectures to uh, figure out how many independent kvl equations are there so you have to first identify a tree and then uh, you add links to the tree to form new loops and around each loop you write a kvl equation okay now this can be done and this is a systematic way of doing it what we will look at is a subclass of this which is known as mesh analysis okay so this loop analysis itself is quite general okay and stop now the mesh analysis is a sub case of this uh, loop analysis and it's applicable to planar circuits that is circuits that can be drawn on a plane okay so all the circuits that we have considered so far they can be drawn on a plane what i mean by this is without any branch crossing other branches okay now i'll give you an example if you have a circuit like this this is a planar circuit no branch is crossing any other branch now to this if i add a branch like this now this branch is crossing that branch okay now we have to be a little careful it's not how you draw the circuit but how it can be drawn okay because if i redraw this if i redraw this even with this red branch it can be drawn in a drawn on a plane without any branch crossing any other branch okay in this case yes i have chosen to draw it in the middle but if i draw it outside then it won't be crossing anything else okay so this is also a planar circuit on the other hand if i have uh, something like this let's say i have something like that and then i also have uh, something going from this node to that node now if i have any branch between here and there it has to cross some branch okay i can draw it inside here when in which case it is crossing this branch alternatively i could draw the same thing from outside in which case it will be crossing this branch okay so this circuit is definitely not planar 
So the method of analysis that I will discuss today, mesh analysis, is not applicable to this uh, circuit, but it is applicable to any planar circuit. Now I have to emphasize here that the general loop analysis, which is based on writing KVL uh, in terms of the link current, is applicable to every circuit. Okay, you first have to identify a tree and then go on. That is similar to identifying a reference node for nodal analysis. Okay. But uh, this mesh analysis is simpler and it gives a structure that's very similar to uh, nodal analysis and that is what we are going to discuss, okay? So once you have a planar circuit, so let me again take a circuit of this sort and I will initially consider a circuit with only uh, resistors and voltage sources. This is a planar circuit. No branch is crossing any other branch. And when you have a planar circuit, you can always identify regions like this, okay, loops like this, which are uh, uh, separate from each other, okay? So imagine that you are looking at the map of India Obviously, you will be able to identify states on the map and uh, each of the states will be separate from the other state, okay? And everything will be on the plane. Now, uh, each of those uh, regions, each of the states, if you will, is called a mesh. So I'll call it mesh number one, mesh number two, and mesh number three, okay? So mesh number three is this loop, mesh number one is that loop, mesh number two is that loop, okay? And let me call it V1, V2, R1, R2, R3, R4, okay? <clears throat> now, uh, in each mesh, we identify a mesh current Okay, let me call this I1 for mesh number 1 and I2 for mesh number 2 and I3 for mesh number 3. What I mean by this is that this is also a loop, okay? So if I take it like this, this is also a loop, but inside this there is another loop. So that is something that we do not consider a mesh, okay? So for a planar circuit, the definition is unambiguous. Each mesh is a loop that doesn't uh, enclose any other loops, okay? And with each mesh, we can identify a current. Each mesh has a mesh, mesh current, okay? And by convention, we'll take all of them to be clockwise. You can take all of them to be counterclockwise and you will get the same result. But uh, our convention is to take all of them in the clockwise direction. Okay? And now uh, the current in each branch can be written in terms of mesh currents. So the current in each branch is the algebraic sum, that is uh, sum in, uh, while taking into account the sign of the current, algebraic sum of mesh currents 
basically, and which measures do we take? The mesh, the meshes. that the branch is part of. Okay. So what I mean is, if you take this one, this branch is part of mesh number one and mesh number three. So the current in this branch would be I1 uh, flowing from uh, left to right minus I3 because I3 is flowing from right to left. Okay. If you take this branch that is part only of uh, mesh 3, so the current in this will be I3. Similarly, if you take this branch, it's branch, it's uh, part of only uh, mesh 2, so its current will be I2, whereas this will be, uh, the current in this will be I1 minus I2 and so on. Okay? So, is there any question regarding the definitions of the mesh and the mesh currents and branch currents in terms of mesh currents? Any questions? I defined uh, planar circuits, meshes, and uh, mesh currents, and branch currents in terms of mesh currents. Any questions about any of these? Okay, there is a question from Obed asking uh, how to find currents in each mesh. Now, it's not something that we find yet. So far, we have not solved for anything. It's a variable that you identify, okay, I1, I2, I3. This is like assigning node voltages with respect to the reference node. We assign node voltages V1, V2, etc., all the way to Vn minus 1, and then solve for them. Similarly, here, we identify mesh currents, I1, I2, I3, etc., for the number of meshes, and then we solve for the uh, mesh currents. Okay, so we have to find out yet what they are. Okay, so now uh, the branch currents must be pretty clear also. Okay, just uh, so that it's very clear, I will write that current here is I1 minus I3, current here is I1 minus I2, current here is I2 minus I3, and current in this direction would be I3 alone. Okay, and here it is I2, and here it is I1. Okay. Now, uh, once we define the mesh current and find the branch currents in terms of mesh currents, we can write KVL around each mesh, okay? So, if I write KVL around mesh number 1, and let me call this V1, and this is V2, if I write uh, KVL around mesh number 1, what do I have? Uh, the voltage drop across R1 plus voltage drop across R3 equals V1, okay?
and the voltage drop across R1 is R1 times the current in R1, which is I1 minus I3 plus R3 times the current in R3, which is I1 minus I2. And that's all. That's all the resistors we have. And we have an independent voltage source. And just like we put independent sources on the right side in nodal analysis, we do the same in mesh analysis. And if you look at the direction of this, uh, I1 minus I3 times R1 is the voltage drop in this direction. I1 minus I2 times R3 is the voltage drop in that direction. So the sum of this plus this equals V1, okay, because V1 is also in the same direction, okay. So now uh, for the second mesh, what we do is the same. The voltage drop across R2 in this direction is R2 times I2 minus I3. Now we always go clockwise around each mesh and we also take the voltage drops in the same direction. Okay. So for this particular uh, branch, the one in the middle, we also take a voltage drop with this to be positive and that to be negative. Okay. Maybe I'll erase some of these things. So while writing the equation for the second mesh, we take the drops in that direction. Okay. While writing the equation for the first mesh, we take in this direction for the second one in that direction. Okay. And for the third one, again, we would do it in the clockwise direction. Voltage drops in the clockwise direction like that, like that, and like that. Okay. So this is just convention. Even if you write it the other way around, you will get the right answers. But if you follow this convention, you will be able to, uh, uh, you will be able to, uh, if you follow this convention, the equations will come out in a systematic manner. Okay. Now, uh, one of the participants has uh, raised hands, but I think unfortunately today's audio setup is such that I cannot hear your questions. So whatever questions you have, please type it in the chat window. So here, uh, the voltage drop across R2 plus voltage drop across R3, which is, if you look at it, it's the current in this direction times R3, okay, which is, and it is equal to minus V2, because if you look at it, this voltage drop is here to there, that is from here to there, and that, if you look at V2, it will be minus V2, okay, if you look at the appropriate direction. Or alternatively, you can think of uh, this voltage plus that voltage plus V2 coming to zero. So that means that when you shift V2 to the right-hand side, you will end up getting minus V2, okay. Now finally, for the third uh, loop, the voltage drop across this plus the voltage drop there plus the voltage drop there equals zero because there are no independent voltage sources in the loop, okay? So R4 times I3, that is the only current flowing through R4 and For the voltage drop in this direction, I have to take the current in that direction, which is I3 minus I2 plus R1 times I3 minus I1. And this will be equal to zero, okay? And this is the equation for mesh number one, KVL equation around mesh number one, mesh number two, and mesh number three. Okay? So I hope this is clear, the procedure for uh, writing the KVL equations around the mesh. So what you do is,
you identify mesh currents, then you represent each branch current as a sum of uh, two mesh currents. When I say sum, it's the sum with direction, so it will come out to be the difference between two mesh currents. Okay, and uh, then you write out the KVL equations in terms of the mesh currents. Okay. Now, when you have resistors, you will have current times the resistance value, and the current is uh, written in terms of the mesh currents. Okay. So, we'll always have terms like uh, I1 minus I3, that is the difference between two currents times the resistance, that will be on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, you will have any independent voltage sources in the circuit. Okay. Now, there was a, a question from uh, uh, Rajesh asking what is the difference between a mesh and a loop. Like I said, mesh is also a loop but it doesn't contain any other loops inside, okay? For instance, in this particular circuit, this is a loop and this is also a loop. But the second one is not a mesh because that loop contains a smaller loop inside, okay? Hopefully that is clear, whereas this is a mesh. So every mesh is a loop, but every loop is not a mesh. Okay. And regarding the direction of mesh current, like I said, by convention, you always take each mesh current to be in the clockwise direction. Okay. Now that gives you a nice structure because So let's say you have two meshes. I'm not showing the elements. I'm just showing the uh, branches in an abstract way. So you take a current like this, I1, and take a current like this, that is I2. Now, every branch current will be equal to either one mesh current or the difference between two mesh currents. So this branch is common to the two meshes. And in the left side mesh, the current is going downwards. And in the right side mesh, it will be going upwards. If you choose your, all your mesh currents to be in the clockwise direction, this will always happen, okay? So, every branch current can be written either as a mesh current, a single mesh current, or as a difference between two mesh currents, okay? And this is analogous to, if you uh, assign node voltages, every branch voltage will be either equal to some node voltage, okay, if the branch is between that node and the reference node, or it will be the difference between two node voltages, okay? Is this fine? So, these are the equations in terms of uh, the mesh currents. And I will again rearrange them and group the variables together. So, I'll have I1, R1 plus R3, minus I2 times R3, minus I3 times R1 to be equal to V1. That is the equation for mesh number one. And the equation for mesh number two, that is minus I1 times R3 plus I2 times R2 plus R3 minus I3 times R2, that will be minus V2. And similarly, for 3, we'll have minus I1 times R1 minus I2 times R2 plus I3 times R1 plus R2 plus R4 equals 0. Okay? So these are the mesh equations. Now, let me copy over the mesh equations also.
And as with nodal analysis, I will write this in a matrix form. As some matrix multiplying the vector of variables, which is the vector of mesh current equal to the source, the vector of independent sources, which is V1 minus V2 and 0. And here you will have R1 plus R3. So this is what is multiplying I1. And the next would be minus R3 and minus R1. So this is for mesh number 1. The second equation is for mesh number 2. And you will write minus R3, R2 plus R3, and minus R2. And finally, for mesh number 3, minus R1, minus R2, and R1 plus R2 plus R4. OK? So any questions on this? Because I had already done nodal analysis earlier, I went a little quickly through this. But if some part is confusing, please ask me. Now, all I did was I first identified mesh current, that is currents in each mesh in a clockwise direction. Then I express every branch current as uh, in terms of mesh currents. And they will come out to be either uh, the mesh current itself for uh, uh, branches along the periphery of the circuit. And for branches which are common to two meshes, it will be the difference between two mesh currents. Then I wrote uh, KVL in terms of these mesh currents. And finally, I group the uh, coefficients for each uh, variable, I1, I2, I3, and then wrote the whole equation as a matrix times the vector of unknowns equals the vector of independent sources, or a matrix of independent sources. OK? Any questions so far? Okay. Now uh, you can see the uh, you can see that this structure is analogous to what we had with uh, uh, nodal analysis when we had only resistors and current sources. Okay. First of all, what are uh, each diagonal elements? What are the diagonal elements? What are the elements on the diagonal of this matrix? Uh, please try to answer this. So in the diagonal, in the first one, I see R1 plus R3. Second one, I see R2 plus R3. And the third one, R1 plus R2 plus R4. What are these? Okay, I think many of you were able to easily answer this one. It's the sum of uh, resistances in each mesh. Okay. Now, similarly, <coughs> so the diagonal elements are sum of uh, resistances in each mesh. Okay, and the off diagonal elements, you see that this element in the matrix notation, this would be called A12, and that is the resistance that is common to mesh 1 and mesh 2. Okay, so this is mesh number 1, mesh number 2, and mesh number 3, and this is common to mesh 1 and mesh 2. Okay. So uh, the off diagonal elements are resistances that are common to meshes. Okay. 
Now you can see the analogy with uh, nodal analysis very easily. So first of all, uh, I will compare nodal analysis of a circuit having current sources and resistors versus mesh analysis which of a circuit with voltage sources and resistors. Now, in case of uh, nodal analysis, the variables are node voltages with respect to reference node. And in case of mesh analysis, the variables would be mesh currents in clockwise direction. Now, all branch voltages will be either from node voltage or difference of uh, two node voltages. A branch can be connected between some node and the reference node or between some two nodes. Okay, if it's connected between some node and reference node, then the branch voltage equals the node voltage. If it's connected between two nodes, then the branch voltage is the difference of two node voltages. And in case of uh, uh, mesh analysis, each branch current is either a mesh current okay now for branches on the periphery on the boundary of the circuit this will be the case okay because those branches will be part of only one mesh and the branch current equals the mesh current or it will be the difference of two mesh currents okay so for branches in the middle again by taking the analogy of the map that will be the borders between two states the uh, current in those branches will be the difference between current in the left branch and the current in the right branch okay so the current in one will be in one direction the current in the other one will be in the opposite direction and this happens because we choose all mesh currents in the clockwise direction Okay, and finally, if you write out the KCL equations and group the variables and so on, and write it in this neat matrix form, you will get conductance matrix times the vector of uh, node voltages. So this is the vector of unknown unknowns, okay? So this V with a bar underside denotes a vector and vector is nothing but a matrix but it has only one column, okay? Equals the source vector. And in case of mesh analysis, you will have the resistance matrix which consists of uh, resistances only times the vector of unknown currents that is the mesh currents equals the source vector which consists of voltage sources in each mesh. When I say source vector, obviously I mean independent Okay. 
and continuing the comparison the conductance matrix g has first of all it is symmetrical and it has diagonal elements which are sum of uh, conductances and of diagonal elements which are and when i say of diagonal if it's the element ij in the matrix conductance between node i and node j okay and in fact it's the negative of that okay similarly the resistance matrix is symmetrical and the diagonal elements will be sum of when i say sum of conductances in the nodal analysis at that node and here it will be sum of uh, resistances in that mesh okay and the off diagonal elements the element ij would be the resistance common to node sorry mesh i and j okay in fact it's the negative of that one okay so by the way all these are true when you have only resistors and current sources in nodal analysis and resistors and voltage sources in mesh analysis okay so this is just to point out the duality between uh, uh, nodal and mesh analysis you start off with kcl and nodal analysis kvl and mesh analysis and in a particular case when you have a circuit with only current sources and resistors for nodal analysis and only voltage sources and resistors for mesh analysis you get a neat structure for the equations which consists of a symmetric matrix times a vector of unknowns equals the vector of independent sources in the circuit okay and also the uh, matrix elements can be written down by inspection in case of nodal analysis by looking at conductances at each node or conductances between different nodes and in case of mesh analysis the total resistance in each mesh or conductances common to to the resistances common to each uh, sorry uh, the total resistance in each mesh or the resistances common to two meshes okay any question so far Now there are some questions about including current source in mesh analysis i will discuss that shortly Okay, 
So now I think the simple case is uh, pretty clear. Uh, we'll just take a numerical example just to get some uh, practice. Or rather, we'll reserve the example for later. Let's have a mesh analysis. Including a current source. Okay. This is the circuit I had earlier. And let's say instead of this resistor R3, I have a current source I1. Okay. Let's say this is the case. Now, uh, as usual for mesh analysis, we have to write KVL. Now, what is the complication here? Uh, I would like to have answers from the participants. I want to write, uh, I want to go ahead with mesh analysis for this circuit. And I initially took a circuit with only resistors and voltage sources. Now I've added a current source. What is the problem? What is the complication with uh, going ahead with mesh analysis for this circuit? So I hope the question is clear. Now, uh, we have already done this. We have addressed a similar question while doing nodal analysis, which includes voltage sources. Okay. Nodal analysis, we write KCL equations, and KCL says sum of currents at every node equals zero. Now, when you have voltage sources, when you have resistors, the current is related to the voltage across the resistor. When you have voltage sources, the current is not related like that. Any current can flow through the voltage source. That's why we were not able to write the KCL properly because we don't know the current through the voltage source. Now, similarly, my question is, if you have mesh analysis and you have current sources, what exactly is the complication? Again, a couple of people have raised their hands, but today the audio setup is such that I will not be able to hear your questions. So all your questions have to be through the chat window, okay? Okay, so the problem is the following. So while writing uh, KVL for this mesh, we have to say that the voltage across R1 plus the voltage across the current source equals the voltage across the voltage source. But a current source can have any voltage across it. Okay, for a resistor, the voltage across the resistor is the current through the resistor times the resistance value. So we can express the voltage source, uh, voltage across the resistor in terms of the current through the resistor. Whereas a current source by definition can support any voltage across itself. So we cannot express the voltage across the current source as uh, something related to the current value. Okay. So the problem is unknown voltage across the current source. Okay, so if you recall, when you had uh, nodal analysis and voltages, you had the complication because of the unknown current through the voltage 
source. Okay. So these are the this is the issue. Now, how do we uh, work around this? What did we do in case of uh, nodal analysis? When we had uh, nodal analysis with voltage sources, what was what was the thing that we did? How did we get around the problem? So my question is, uh, when we had nodal analysis with voltage sources, what did we do? We don't know the current through it, so what did we do? So what we did was to define an auxiliary variable for the current through the voltage source. Now that gave us an extra variable and also an extra equation because of the voltage source. And uh, we were able to write down the equation. And also for hand analysis, we were able to combine two of those equations, effectively giving us a super node. Okay. So here the uh, procedure we follow is exactly uh, the same. What we don't know is the voltage across this current source, let me call that Vx, okay? So if I write the KVL equation for uh, mesh number one, okay, I will have the voltage drop across R1, which is R1 times I1 minus I3, okay? Because this is common to mesh number one and mesh number three. This is mesh number three, and here I have mesh number two, okay? This is the voltage that drop across R1 plus Vx equals V1. This is for mesh number one, and for mesh number two, we will have R2 times I2 minus I3 minus Vx equals minus V2, okay? Once Vx is defined with this polarity, when you go around the second mesh, you will have minus Vx. Okay, so if you look at the drops going clockwise, you will have the current in R2 times R2 minus V2 minus Vx equals zero, and V2 is moved to the right-hand side. Sorry, plus V2 minus Vx equals zero, and V2 is moved to the right-hand side. Okay. So now uh, what we have is an extra variable. Now to solve for the extra variable, we need an extra equation. By the way, the equation for mesh number three remains exactly as it was before because mesh number three is not modified in any way by adding this current source, okay? So where do we get the extra equation from? My question is, by defining the voltage across the current source to be Vx, we have got an extra variable in our set of equations. To solve for the extra variable, we also need an extra equation. So where is the extra equation? So let me call this, uh, like I did before, this current I will call I1 and this current I will call I2, okay? And let me just change this to I0, just so that I don't have two I1s in the uh, 
uh, circuit and as uh, RT answered this I1 minus I2 which is this branch current is known that is defined by the current source and that will be equal to I0. Okay. Now we did exactly this when we had uh, nodal analysis when a voltage source was connected between node 3 and node 4 let's say we said V3 minus V4 equals the voltage source value. So that gives us the extra equation. Okay. So the extra equation is nothing but the definition of the current source. Okay. So if I put all of these things together, what I will get and I will write it directly in the matrix form. I'll have mesh currents and the voltage across the current source as the variables. Okay. Then uh, for the second mesh, we'll have And for the third mesh, we will have and the last one will be just a definition of, uh, sorry, here I would also add uh, plus Vx and in the second one minus Vx, okay. So that's what we had. I wrote the last entries incorrectly. I have uh, plus Vx here and minus Vx over there. And also, finally, I'll have I1 minus I2 equals I0. So that means 1 minus 1. That gives me I1 minus I2. And that is equal to I0. Okay? So in my variable vector, I have this extra stuff. And my independent source vector consists of voltage sources and the current source. Okay. And this matrix, which I will continue to call the resistance matrix, has resistances as well as some dimensionless quantities. Okay. So the setup is still in terms of resistance times the variable vector equals the source vector. Variable current vector equals the source vector. But this variable vector also consists of this auxiliary variable, which is the voltage across the current source. And similarly, the uh, right-hand side vector consists of independent sources, which consists of voltage sources as well as current sources. Okay? Now, uh, while doing hand analysis, this uh, increased number of equations is not a good thing. You would like to uh, reduce the number of uh, equations. Okay, so then the answer is very clear. Again, we followed all these steps while doing uh, nodal analysis with voltage sources. So I will go through it a little quickly. If I sum these two, okay, KVL around mesh number one and KVL around mesh number two, what happens is this Vx cancels out. And this is not a coincidence. This will always happen because Vx is defined to be across some branch. So on, uh, in one of the meshes which contains that branch, it will appear as uh, plus Vx and in the other mesh it will appear as minus Vx. Okay? So it will always cancel out. And if I add these two equations, what I will get? Is I will have the equation as, let's say this is I1, I2, I3. I'll have the voltage drop across R1, which is R1 
I1 minus I3 plus I had that plus Vx equals V1, but that Vx cancels with minus Vx. And here I have R2 times I2 minus I3 minus Vx, which cancels out, okay, equals V1 minus V2. And if you observe, uh, originally I had the equation, uh, KVL equation around this loop or this mesh and the KVL equation around this mesh. So if I add the two, essentially what I have is a single KVL equation around this bigger mesh, which encloses the current source. Okay. This is nothing but KVL equation around the, this bigger mesh, which is called a super mesh, okay, in analogy to super node. So if uh, a branch that is common to two meshes is a current source, what you do is you avoid that branch and you write the equation around a super mesh, which encloses that current source, okay. When you do that, uh, that current, the voltage across the current source will not be in the picture and you will get this uh, KVL equation in terms of all the voltage drops. So for instance, this is the voltage drop across R1, this is the voltage drop across R2 and on the right hand side you have the total voltage in the super mesh, okay. Okay, is this clear? Any questions? This is exactly analogous to what we do with nodal analysis and voltage sources. There we define a super node, which comes out because of uh, defining an auxiliary variable and uh, canceling out by adding two equations. Here we define the voltage across current sources as the auxiliary variable, add up the equations for the two meshes, that uh, auxiliary variable cancels out, and you will be left with a single KVL equation around the super mesh, okay? Okay, now uh, there is a question about uh, non-ideal current sources. And we have not discussed non-ideal current sources but uh, maybe we can uh, quickly do that. See, uh, as far as the analysis is concerned, a non-ideal current source will be the same as an ideal current source in parallel with some resistance, okay? So for instance, in this case, you would have an extra resistance. Now if you have that, then in case of uh, mesh analysis, you will have an extra mesh and you have to write that, okay? So when I write a current source like this with this symbol, it by definition means an ideal current source, okay? If you have to depict a non-ideal current source, what you have to do is to have an ideal current source in parallel with a resistor. Obviously, now you have increased the number of components in the circuit. In case of nodal analysis, the number of nodes remains exactly the same, uh, but you have an extra element. And in case of mesh analysis, if you have a resistance across the current source, you will have an extra mesh and you have to solve for it. That's all. Okay. So whatever we said so far will apply to this. The only thing is, if you know that the current source is non-ideal, you have to model it with two components, an ideal current source and a resistor. Okay. So I hope that answers the question. So now uh, when you write the equation around the super mesh, you will have one uh, less equation because uh, for two meshes you wrote a single equation and uh, but you, you do still have three variables, I1, I2 and I3, okay? 
So you have lost one equation because you defined the combination of two meshes as a super mesh and wrote a single equation for these two meshes together. But you will get an extra equation which is the same as before, which is the definition of the current source. Okay. So I hope uh, this is clear. Okay, so now uh, we can again compare nodal analysis and mesh analysis, but when you have an extra, when you have a voltage source in nodal analysis, Okay. So when you have nodal analysis with voltage source, first of all, if the voltage source is between a certain node, I'll call it node K and reference node, you already know that node voltage. Okay. So you don't have to write an equation for that and you can write the equation for the rest of the nodes. Okay. Similarly, if there is a current source along the periphery, then uh, the mesh current is known. Okay, so again, we can remove this variable uh, from the uh, equations and uh, use only the remaining mesh current. Okay, now these are for hand analysis. Usually for uh, computer analysis, what you do is you don't have uh, different uh, things that you do for uh, different cases. You would like to have a uniform algorithm that covers all the cases. So in that case, what you do is that you do always, when you have a voltage source in nodal analysis, you define the current through the voltage source as an auxiliary variable and then go ahead with it. You don't worry about whether the voltage source is between some node and the reference node or between two nodes, etc. But while doing hand analysis, you reduce the number of equations, your job only becomes easier. So that's why you do this. Okay. And if you have a voltage source between to nodes, you define a super node, which is the combination of the two nodes, and if you have a current source common to two meshes, when it's on the periphery, it belongs only to one mesh. when it belongs to two meshes, then you define a super mesh, which is a combination of two meshes. Okay? <clears throat> So again, the analogy between nodal analysis with voltage source and mesh analysis with current source is very clear. Okay, so you should be able to choose either one. Now, both methods will work for uh, any uh, circuit. Uh, for now, let's assume that all our circuits are planar circuits. Mesh analysis, we know, is applicable only to planar circuits. 
Now my question is, let's say you have a planar circuit. Which one will you choose? Will you choose nodal analysis or mesh analysis? I would like uh, opinions of the participants. So I opened a poll. You can uh, register your vote for either uh, mesh analysis or node analysis. Now this is a, actually I think you can now see the result, okay. So most of you have chosen mesh analysis and I'm a little surprised. I would like to hear from you, those of you who chose mesh analysis, why you would choose mesh analysis over node analysis. What is the reason for choosing mesh analysis? Out of 11 people who answered, nine people have chosen mesh analysis. What's the reason? Now, of course, we are talking only about planar circuits because the mesh analysis, the way we defined it, is not even applicable to non-planar circuits. Okay, now let's see what would be the basis of choice. Now for node analysis, first of all, uh, like I said, when we do uh, nodal or uh, mesh analysis, We first write for node analysis KCL equations and get the node voltages. And in case of mesh analysis, we get the mesh current. After that, we still have some work to do, but that's rather trivial, okay? In case of node analysis, to find branch voltages, you have to take difference between uh, node voltages that you have calculated. And in case of mesh analysis, to find branch currents, you have to find differences between mesh currents that you have calculated. Now, these things are quite easy, and I'm assuming it can be done quite easily, okay? So the moment you solve the nodal analysis equations, we call the circuit to be solved, although we know that a little bit more work is required. Okay. Similarly, uh, when uh, you do mesh analysis, you solve for mesh currents, and after that there is a little bit of more work, but that's uh, relatively easy, so it is solved. So the choice is between, uh, choice is based on the number of equations you have to solve. Okay, for node analysis, you have n minus one, equation. So let's take a circuit with n nodes and b branches. Okay. So n minus 1 
ACL equations for nodal analysis. And for mesh analysis, it is B minus N plus 1 KVL equations. Okay, so this is what we need to solve. Now, which of these is likely to be more? Is uh, N minus 1 likely to be more or B minus N plus 1 likely to be more? Okay. So, which of these will have more equations? So, node analysis has N minus 1 equations for a circuit with N nodes and B branches. Mesh analysis has B minus N plus 1 equations. So, which is likely to be more? Obviously, if you have to solve, uh, you will choose the one with uh, smaller number of equations. Again, uh, many of you have said nodal. Now, it depends on the number of branches. Okay. So, it very much depends on B. Right. And also, uh, it depends on the circuit because, for instance, I could have a circuit like this. Now, these are uh, these dots are nodes and the rest are branches. You can see that there is a single loop, but so many different nodes. Okay. Alternatively, I could also have uh, things like this. Okay. I have only two nodes, but uh, so many loops. Okay, now these are weird cases. Obviously, in this case, in the right-hand side, when you have only two nodes, you would use nodal analysis. And in this case, you would use mesh analysis. There is a single loop. But uh, what happens in a general case is that this uh, B, uh, now, when you have N minus 1, when you have N nodes, right, it's possible that every node is connected to every other node through some branch. Okay. Now, this is not very likely, but it is very much possible. Now, if every node is connected to every other node through a branch, how many branches will we have? Please try and answer this. That is, I have an N node circuit. Now, how many branches are there depend very much on the circuit. But obviously, the maximum is that every node is connected to every other node. That's possible, right? So, in that case, how many branches in total will we have? So I got one answer, which said uh, factorial n, and now that is not correct. Okay, so you please think about it. Now uh, we will stop here, and we will continue with this in the next lecture. But in the meanwhile, you please think about this. If every node is connected to every other node in the circuit, how many branches will we have in total? Okay. So what we have done today is to discuss mesh analysis, which is an analysis based on KVL for uh, planar circuits. And we also made an analogy with nodal analysis. Okay, so it should be quite easy to understand. We also looked at the exceptional case, which is uh, uh, mesh analysis with uh, current sources, which is analogous to nodal analysis with voltage sources. Okay, so hopefully you understood it all. Uh, then, uh, uh, if uh, if you have not understood it, then please raise your questions in the beginning of the next class, and we'll discuss them. Now, there is actually a good uh, point here that if n is greater than 4 or 5, doesn't the circuit become non-planar? 
it is true it could become non planar so let's not worry about node versus mesh analysis we can talk about node versus loop analysis loop analysis can be done even for uh, non planar circuit i didn't discuss that because mesh analysis gives you a neat structure and that's what is uh, usually uh, uh, in uh, most textbooks so that's why i didn't discuss that but even a non planar circuit can be analyzed with uh, loop analysis and the number of equations you will have to write will be uh, is still b minus n plus 1 okay so please think about this if every node is connected to every other node how many branches in total and also please think about everything we have discussed with nodal and mesh analysis uh, if there are any difficulties we'll start with that in the next lecture thank you i'll see you on thursday